In this video, I want to talk about how to judge convergence of Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithms. And this video is a bit unusual because basically throughout this entire video, I'm not really going to talk about Markov chain Monte Carlo. I'm going to use an analogy to try and explain how we can judge convergence of such algorithms. And the analogy actually comes from a lecture which I saw, which was uh, delivered by Bob Carpenter, uh, who's one of the principal people who works on STAM. And whilst I'm using an analogy here to explain how to judge convergence, basically everything that I'm talking about comes from Gelman and Rubin's 1992 article, uh, which you can actually find a link to beneath this video. So the analogy that I'm going to use now is imagining that we have a house and it's a house of unknown shape. And what we would like to do is we would like to know what the blueprints of the house look like. We want to try and work out what the shape of the house actually is. But unfortunately, we can't go in the house, nor do we have access to any photographs of the house or anything like that. Fortunately, though, what we do have at our disposal is a number of bumblebees. And I've shown <laughs> some pictures here. And on each of the bumblebees is equipped a GPS tracker, which can broadcast the location of a given bee at a given point in time. Further, suppose that these little bees can get into the house through some gaps in, say, the ceiling. Then the idea is once one of the bees is in the house, Suppose that we follow its path by tracking its location over time. Couldn't we then use the path of the bees over time to help us to work out what the house's shape is? And we imagine that the bees move uniformly at random throughout the house. So they sort of fly in random directions for random durations. The question we might have then is, how long do we need to monitor the path of a B to allow us to work out what the shape of the house is. So I'm going to first off start off by imagining that we've released a single B into the house. Now I want to illustrate using a series of simulations in Mathematica how this process might work. So starting off with a single B which we're starting off at some random location in the house and you can kind of see it down here in the bottom part of the screen. Now what we can do is we can follow the B over time and what we hope is that after we followed the bee for a given amount of time, that the bee's path starts to trace out the shape of the house. And so what we can see here is that after we followed the bee for a set period of time, it looks like perhaps we have reached the limits of the house. It looks like the bee has perhaps been limited by the walls here, here and here, and perhaps this is actually the shape of the house. Whilst we may think that the bee has traced out the dimensions of the house, perhaps we decide on the advice of colleagues to watch the bee for a little bit longer. So we're watching the bee, it's sort of going along, and as we sort of saw before, it looks like the bee has traced out the shape of the house, and it's this kind of triangular shape that we see down here in the bottom of the screen. But then we notice that the bee is kind of transitioning up into an area here that it hasn't been before. So it looks now like the bee perhaps is moving to a new area of the house. And again, the bee has now moved up and it's tracing out an entirely new area of the house. And so we decide, well, we might as well wait a bit longer now because it seems like the bee is uncovering new territory. And we watch it for a while, but, but now we think perhaps we're quite confident that this is indeed the shape of the entire house. And so perhaps we might go back to our colleagues and say, well, this is the dimensions of the house. Whilst we're quite confident that the bee has now traced out the shape of the house, perhaps we decide to wait a little bit longer still. And so begrudgingly, we just sort of watch our bee a bit longer, even though we think now we're confident that the bee has indeed traced out the shape of the house. And as we kind of expect, the bee seems to have traced out the entirety of the house because it's not moving to any new rooms. So just watching it a little bit longer. Then 
it looks as though the bee is going into somewhere that's completely new. And so whilst we, we believed before that the bee had traced out the shape of the house, it looks like there are entirely new rooms that it hadn't explored yet. And so now we're really unconfident about the fact that the bee had indeed traced out the shape of the house. And if we allow the bee to run a little bit longer, it seems that there are even more rooms that we weren't aware of before. What does the actual house look like? Well, it looks something like this. And you can see here that I've created quite a strangely shaped house. And so now you can kind of see why it took the bee quite a long time to initially move through this quite narrow region here to the room here. And also you can see why it's taken the bee quite a long time to, by chance, just move through this small gap here into the rest of the house. And so I hope that this example illustrates that if you use a single bee, in other words, in MCMC, you use a single Markov chain, it's very hard to know whether you've converged to the target distribution. Because if you were to wait just a little bit longer, it might be the case that you move into entirely new regions and it will look like you haven't converged again. So what's the solution here? Well, Gelman and Rubin in 1992 said that what we should do instead is we should use multiple Bs, or really what they said was multiple Markov chains. And what you should do is you should start those Bs in dispersed locations throughout parameter space. So now what I've done is I've started some bees in random locations in the house and as I follow the bees, it's quite obvious that we haven't yet converged on the shape of the house with this kind of short simulation time because the paths of the bees actually aren't overlapping with one another. So with multiple bees or multiple Markov chains, just how long should we wait before we have any degree of confidence that we've converged on the target distribution? Well, the idea is that we continue to run our chains until the chains have entirely mixed with one another. And in our sort of bees example now, what we should see is that the colors of all of the paths should be indistinguishable from one another. So whilst here I haven't quite run the bees for long enough because you can still make out distinct colors, you can see that at least we're getting close to converging on the shape of the house because, and, and we can diagnose that because of the fact that all of the chains are mixing well with one another. And basically the idea is that we should never be able to differentiate one of the chains from any of the other chains. So in summary, whenever we are doing MCMC, it is crucial that you use multiple chains. Ideally, the more chains the better. Also, it's important to note that even if we do use multiple chains, this method isn't foolproof. We never have an absolute guarantee that we have indeed converged on the target distribution. It might just be that there are areas of parameter space which are difficult to get to. However, whilst MCMC has its pitfalls, it's currently the best method that we have for drawing samples from some difficult sorts of distributions. But you do nonetheless need to be aware that these convergence diagnostics aren't themselves foolproof. Whilst I've been reasonably hand wavy here with what do I actually mean by convergence, and I've said, you know, all the paths of our chains should be indistinguishable from one another. In practice, there is a convergence diagnostic, which is known as R-hat, which provides a numerical value to this convergence. But nonetheless, the concept is the same. And so again, whilst R hat is currently the best available metric we have that we've converged to the target distribution, it still has its pitfalls. So when in doubt, you should always favor using more chains and with each of the chains having more iterations.